<laughs> this is making my heart sad. I just found out something new about my best friend right here on this episode of Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. <laughs> Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. Donuts and DJs. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen. What's up? Welcome back to the T-Back channel here on YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Donuts and DJs. And today I got the one, the only, my best friend, Mr. Holland himself. Holland, how you been? Groovy. Groovy? Been funk, funking it up? Uh, yep, funk hazard. Nice. Well yeah, clearly you guys have seen other videos with us in, on this channel reacting to silly stuff here on YouTube. But I'm so excited to sit down with my best friend and have a little talk about DJing and music and stuff and how he got started. So, why don't you give us a little introduction on yourself and maybe let, let the people know how we met and all that good stuff. Well, I'm Alex Holland. Everybody calls me Holland. No DJ in front of it. Just Holland. Uh, yeah, I'm a resident DJ here in Cedar Falls at Voodoo Lounge. And sometimes I play down in Des Moines at Shags at your That's house. Right. We, we swap. Swap like wife swapping, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So let them know like <laughs> how we got started back in the day. You know, you and Clayton would go out. Shout out to our third roommate Wheeler out there. Yeah, uh, me and old Clay would go down on Main Street, grab a couple pictures, stop up at Voodoo. Pretty much, this was going on like every weekend for a while. And after a while doing that, we just got to chopping it up with this guy. Ended up going back for some afties at his place, and then a couple weeks later, he asked if we wanted to move in, because he had a couple open bedrooms. Mm -hmm. We were like, yeah, of course. So that happened. Lived there for a while. We lived what? together for about, what, five years? Something like that? Three to five years, somewhere in there? It was a, it was a good while. Yeah, it's a good run. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I would just tag along with him to <coughs> his DJ stuff, and just kind of like help out with that until I like started to get pretty interested in it yeah he always volunteered for the worst part of being a dj's homie which is carrying the equipment up and down shady staircases we're talking metal wobbly staircases in the middle of winter all the time he would always help me out carry the coffin and help me tear down at the end of the nights and everything and you know kind of from one thing to the other like hanging around with a dj either you're gonna be complete like you'll eventually get interested in it or you'll probably just like not care for it at all and he definitely started getting the bug and I believe it was like a wedding or something that I was like, hey, I can't be there for the whole wedding. So I need you to like finish out the wedding for me. You think you can handle it? I'll have you, you know, the music set up, everything you need should be there for you. It should be good to go. I was nervous. And yeah, he was super nervous. I remember. And it, I was kind of nervous too, just because I'd never like played at that event center before. Everything was like new to us, but I, it worked. They loved it. They had a good time. And from there on, yeah. I, I think he definitely had the itch and here we are now, you know? Yeah, and then you were, uh, what, you were DJing Country Night for... Oh, yeah. For A coon's till, age. Until you got just fed up with that, and I had been going every week, so I was mm -hmm. like... This dude even knew, like, basically all the dances and everything, so it's like, yeah, I can DJ that night, and I gladly handed it over to him for a while, and yeah, and ever since then, I mean, it's just, yeah, he resident and playing all... Got to pay your dues. That's right. You got to pay your dues and carry equipment, do whatever you got to do. It's well, and it's good to carry equipment and get to know equipment and get familiar with it. So that way, yeah, you can learn to troubleshoot it and all that stuff as well. But yeah, so in, in a sense, we're kind of like, you know, Jedi and an apprentice or a Sith Lord and a, what you'd be my Darth Maul or my Kylo Ren or something. I'll be Dark Maul. Dark, dark Maul. Hashtag Dark Mall down in the comments. All right, so we got some donuts and we should probably cheers some donuts. What are you grabbing? Blueberry. He's grabbing the blueberry. Of course. I'm grabbing the blueberry. It's a blueberry explosion. Best friend's blueberry. Ching. Mmm. So what is your favorite type of donut? Is it is it Dunkin' blueberries or is it what else you like out there? Honestly, I'm gonna get this down quick. <laughs> the power of editing. Casey's and Quickstar both have really good blueberry mm -hmm. frosted cake donuts and those were probably definitely my favorite nice what's your other favorite kind of go-to junk food or snack food oh, <laughs> i'm kind of a garbage can when it comes to snack food so favorite i don't know i kind of go through just like 
phases. It's, yeah, but for a while, re the most recent one was probably those Chester's Cheesy Puffs $2 bag. Mm -hmm. Just be crushing those bags or any type of chocolate, really. Nice. And I got us, you know, some iced coffee, but what other beverages is like a must have for you, either while you're working or like just throughout your day? Gatorade. Gatorade? Gatorade and water. What flavor of Gatorade? Riptide Rush, for sure. Hell yeah, bro. Riptide Rush. That's the one that's like light purple, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I know my, I know my Raid. I'm yeah, getting I'm not, raid. not a big soda guy. I'll drink it, but if I go to the store, I almost never buy a pop. And for, you know, all the people out there wanting to buy you a drink while you're spinning, what's your go-to, you know, adult beverage? It was vodka Red Bulls, but... You getting burned out? Too much Red Bull. So I'm um, switched to White Claws. I'm a nice little White Claw boy. He's <laughs> a basic bald baby bitch. No, they're just good. No, they're fresh. I, I know. I I got out of the game before White Claw was even made, man. Yeah. Um, sweet or spicy? If there's like a bowl of nuts, you know, and this one's gonna be sweet or this one's gonna be spicy, what's your instinct to go to first? Spicy. Nice. Yeah, I've tried to introduce my homie here to the, as much of the spice life as he can handle. I can't go as far as he can. Have you done the death nut thing? No. Okay, I had one of the, like, one nut out of the big bag he had, yeah. but I didn't do, like, the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, he gave me the whole kit today, which that'll be a, a video at a later time, but there's, like, three nuts in each stage, and there's five stages, so there's, like, 15 nuts, and they all have yeah. the craziest, like, powder on them. It start, and you have a time, and then you gotta, like, eat it, chew it, swallow it, and then you have this much time and then you go to the next one and it just gets hotter and hotter. Yeah, I'm probably going to die during that. Um, so where did you grow up? Where are you currently living? Well, I grew up in Waverly, Iowa, which is about 20 minutes north of Cedar Falls. Um, moved over to Shell Rock, freshman year of high school. Best place ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's tiny, but- Super tiny. I liked it more than Waverly, more freedom, laid back, it's quiet. But now I'm in Cedar Falls. Nope, Cedar Lou, right on the border, pretty much. Yep. Been living there for a while now. And he also obviously frequents down to Des Moines to see your boy. And like I said, we swip, we swap clubs to keep things fresh. You know. Yes, we do. Favorite movie or TV show? Like, and it could be set, like it could be a TV show series you're into right now. But then what? Also, I want to know like what's your favorite like go-to movie? Just to throw on at the end of a night or something, and you're like, yes. Favorite series? I don't know, I got really hard into Supernatural for a while. Yes, you did. This is true. That was, like, probably one of my faves. Nice. And That's then I one. got bored and didn't finish all of it, so. Isn't there, like, how many seasons? Like, there's way over seven or eight. It's it ridiculous. Yeah. And it's just, like, a perpetual cycle of, like, you're my brother, don't die. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna die for you. Yeah. But no, you can't. <laughs> Sammy! Like, and then people yeah. die, but there's some uh, magically resurrected. First, like, Four or five seasons, I would say, are awesome. Mm -hmm. And after that, it just kind of gets repetitive. And then, yeah, so what about go-to movie? Bad Boys 2. <laughs> All day. Bad Boys 2. That's a nice fucking fish. Big fucking eye. <laughs> That's a nice fucking fish. That's awesome. Um, what is your biggest fear in life? Like, I know you're... Su he's a superstitious cat, this one is. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh... It's not, like, a huge fear, man, but... No, I know it's not a huge fear. I mean... Like, for me, it's heights, and it's not, like, I'm not super... I'm but not I get scared of me. heights. I'm scared of, like, falling from a very high distance, though. Like, I can be up right next to the edge of something, but just, like, the thought of, like, that falling feeling. I don't even like roller coasters. I don't do none of that. Huh. I'll jump off like a little cliff into like some water, but like anything that gets too high, no. That's probably I, my biggest fear. I was just thinking about this the other day. I didn't know you wouldn't do roller coasters. No. We haven't got a chance to, I guess, go to an actual never, theme park. I've never yet. even been to Adventureland, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> this is making my heart sad. I just found out something new about my best friend right here on this episode of Donuts and DJs. Yeah, but the crazy thing is I have seen him stand at the edge of the voodoo building here, which is like three stories tall, and it has like a pretty fat ledge. What would you say? Like a foot and a half, two feet wide probably. And he'll stand up on that and like look out over downtown. But you won't go on a roller coaster with me, huh? No, I just, that feeling of falling is like... Yeah, the little like weightless dream, butterfly yeah, feeling I in your stomach. I in dreams all the time. I hate it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> That's the one thing I love. Like I've loved roller coasters ever since I was little because of that. Um... Well, we kind of covered the when, why, and, you know, what got you into DJing, but did you have any interest in it, did you think, before, like, you and I started hanging out and we met, like... 
I mean, I guess I'd like being from Waverly. It wasn't like a very big. Yeah, I mean, it's not a prevalent thing, but I've always been like into music, and I would like had this ghetto speaker system in my bedroom when I was younger and like had it rigged up and then I found my stepdad's record player and all his records started playing through those and just like I mean obviously I stupidly did a little yeah scratchy, wiki wiki scratch noise <laughs> do the wiki wiki that. thing but uh no man like just didn't really even think about it I guess until I got down here and actually saw a DJ in person and then it was kind of like pretty dope like. and we got to put this story in here right now because if we don't we might forget but it, going along with what you said about being into music and stuff that was one thing that really like I think we hit it off and made us uh, so close as friends is that like his knowledge of music beyond just what was popular at the time or even you know like during our lifetime was so extensive and I think I have this one really fond memory of like we just got done at the night everybody's out of the bar lights are up people are cleaning and like we're starting to unplug stuff. I, I'm walking back to the bathroom and all of a sudden I hear boom, 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 boom. either that or I was playing, I played Terrence Trent Darby and then went to the bathroom. But he was singing it word for word and dancing to it and stuff. And we both looked That's at each other like, you know this song? And he's like, you know this song? I was like, we both know this song? And like, yeah, it was literally like a stepbrothers moment. Like, did we just become best friends? And yeah. Yeah, we that, pretty much that, did. That, that kicked it off pretty good. Yeah, and that was like seriously within the first couple months of us hanging out, so. And then we just went like, old school music crazy and like just yeah we're like do you know this song like, he's yeah. like yeah he's like do you know this one and like even yeah i learned a bunch of new songs from him that i might not have been that familiar with like that sonia dada track and stuff but like straight bangers <laughs> like yeah <laughs> slappers and so yeah that's i mean the basis of our our best friendship has definitely been rooted in music and video games and movies and all that stuff but yeah i just wanted to get that story in before we forgot um artists or djs that inspire you like right now, who's someone that, you know, kind of keeps you? Well, Joe Maz was kind of like the first guy, like big, bigger name, big, I don't know, that I saw and then I like met him and got to talk to him. So like pick his brain and then listening through his music, I really enjoyed it a lot. So he's definitely one of the most influence. solid remix dudes for top 40 stuff that you can play at the club like ever, pretty much. Otherwise. It's so nice. Yeah. I mean, you could say just pretty much any bigger producer, DJ people, like, obviously they're a good inspiration. Okay, so who's some people you're excited to see at Electric Forest things? I know you're going to Forest this summer. <laughs> T-Pain, for sure, just because, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I'm kind of jealous of that one. I want to see T-Pain and hang out with him sometime in my life. So T-Pain, if you ever run across my little YouTube series here, brother. Throw me on the spot here. I got to look at my... No, why not? All I'm looking it's for you to say is like charismatic and big gigantic yeah. and all the ones that I know yeah. you love. Yeah. I know it's hard sure. to think of stuff when when there's a camera rolling and I ask you off the top of your head like, what's your favorite? Yeah. You know. I mean yeah, What year is this? Is this your third year going to Forest? Fourth. Fourth? Yeah, so all you electric forest kids, shout out, you know, down in the comments where you're gonna be. Meet me in the forest. Yeah, meet my dude in the forest, hook up, have a good time, share treats and goodies and high fives. For your boy. Ground right? scores. Right? <laughs> yeah, ground scores. Be careful with those, though, children. Um, Test your shit. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, what's your favorite genre to, like, DJ with? So if someone, you know, said, hey, it's an hour-long set, the crowd's going to be into whatever you want to throw down. Well, shoot. Like, I don't know. Being an open format DJ, you get to dabble in a little bit of everything. I'd say, like, my favorite, though, is when I get into, like, some groovy house remixes or, like, old-school... Mm -hmm. House remixes like old songs, but with a new like, house, beat, like, yeah. house beat and stuff. And yeah, I, I get down with that. like those great vine remixes. Oh, and, yeah. oh yeah, all oh, that yeah. stuff. It's I so love, good. I love playing those throwbacks. And then I mean, we've kind of touched on this because you do have such a diverse and expansive, you know, knowledge of music, especially older music. But what you know, what's your favorite kind of like palate cleanser stuff? You know, like when we're not listening to club music or getting oh, in that man. mood. I usually listen to like old like stuff my dad used to play mm -hmm. for me like jim croce and you know just stuff that's on like the classic rock station like rod and, stewart oh yeah eagles like all that stuff by the way that rod like, stewart car karaoke yeah i watched that queen movie oh. bohemian rhapsody and so that got me like back into queen and i've been jamming to that a lot lately which you can never go wrong with queen like ever another one bites the dust it just slaps so hard in yeah. your cars oh yeah 
there's so many good on. Queen songs too. Like I always remember like, you know, the their most famous ones, but then yeah, you go even dig dig through a couple of their B sides or just like pick a song you're like, oh, I haven't heard that Queen song, and it's probably still gonna be badass because it's Queen. Yeah. <laughs> um what's the craziest DJ story you have or the strangest gig? Or it could be like, you know, the craziest person that's harassed you throughout the night or something, but you know, uh, we we've seen and done a, a lot of stuff. I have <laughs> I have a video. I took of this girl that was talking to me at the end of the, like, is it the middle of the night or something like that? Is it the one I posted to Reddit, that thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. And she was, <laughs> actually. You tell your contract. Let's go back real quick. My first night DJing country night here in Cedar Falls was probably the most crazy because I'm playing along, like, pretty nervous, you know, but I'm doing okay. Pretty simple stuff there, but uh, this kid ended up having a seizure on the oh. dance floor and I was like what do I do do I stop the music oh. do I turn it down like they always said like just don't ever like just kill the music right so I'm like just kind of turned it down a little bit and then somebody called the ambulance came they came and got him and it was actually a kid I knew he's fine he's all good <laughs> but uh yeah that was that was crazy the first, only time like, first night actually like yeah. playing in a club Whatever. I don't was, know. I don't know what I would have done. It like, was that's crazy. like it was like whoa. Only time anything's ever been shut down because someone had a seizure was like I was in the second Lord of the Rings movie, and they like sh dude that was a whole mess though because I think then they like restarted the first forty five minutes of the movie. I don't know. It was insane, but I can't imagine what that would be like to yeah. Because in country night too, everyone's dancing on the floor, so it's like you got to make room, you know. But, but everyone there is cool. So. so the other story, quick, was girl trying to request a song. And she kept coming, and I, finally I was like, look, I'm under contract. I can't play this type of music that you're asking me for. Just making up some bullshit. But So at the end of the night comes up, and the lights come on or whatever, and it's a little quieter so you can hear now. So I start filming, and she's like, you need to tell your contractor that you need to control the music of the club because you could be so much better, and you have the talent. They're taking away your artistry. So tell your contractor that they need to just shut the fuck up. And I was yeah. like, And they need to listen to what is... girls like me want. Yeah, yeah they want to Because I'm from ass, Colorado right? or wherever, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was, it was every basic girl, like, cliche wrapped into one in a voicemail. And even her friend afterwards was like, who are you even snapping? <laughs> Maybe we'll, you can drop that link to that Reddit page. Yeah, I'll, if I can find that Reddit link, I'll drop it. And you I'll guys resend it to you. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it and hear it. <laughs> I'm sure other DJs out there will appreciate it. Um, blur her face then, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> She's probably watching. Um, what's a uh, favorite piece of gear that you might have or something that you're longing for? I really just want... I mean, I, him and I usually I run mean, on the same kind of setup, so we're pretty comfortable with our, you know, Pioneer CDJ like 162. The, I mean, those DVJs were comfortable. They were mm -hmm. way unnecessary, but like... I like the I CDJ two thousands too. Yeah, I mean those are just as fine. If I just had those and uh, sixty two. Then have you have like, you even seen that new seventy two yet? I've seen how crazy they're getting. Yeah, like, you got to go look at it. Coffee had one. I didn't get to play with it though. It was in his uh, cases and stuff. But that's I what mean, he like, plays out. A brand new set would obviously be fucking ideal, but like reasonably wise, yeah, I'd be <laughs> happy with just that. I don't even. I'm four channels freaks me out too. By the way. Yeah, all, oh boy, all the house and techno guys are going to be down there like, well, you don't, can't run four tracks, bro? Can't run four tracks? But four tracks would be kind of weird with what we do for like open format, top 40 stuff. And I mean, if I had... You could do it, but it could get like garbly and I guess if I messed up to what I normally play on, but the only times I've used that is on like a slab. All in one unit, controller, et cetera, et cetera. DDJ, yeah. blah. SX900. Do you produce music or, you know, make your own remixes, mashups, edits, any of that stuff? No, I don't. I just download and play and buy and play. And Are you wanting to get into it at all? I mean, I'd I like mean, to. Yeah. It's just not something I've ever really even dabbled with too much aside from, like, us messing yeah. around. But that was me just being like, well, yeah. let's make this sound like this or whatever. But, I mean, I would like to play around with some music. I think it'd be fun. I'd like to do... Just like some bootleg shit. Yeah, as I was saying, anytime you have a bootleg idea, I can show you how to whip that up in Ableton real fast. Or that whatever. would be something that would interest me. I've had lots of ideas for that, but I just haven't had... Write them down. Like, I always forget. Like, I'll be driving, have a bunch of good ideas, and yeah, if you don't write them down or put them in your phone or something, you'll forget about them, and you'll be pissed later. 
Um, do you have any advice for, you know, guys out there wanting to get into DJing or thinking about DJing? Um, what's Holland's words of advice? I mean, if you're looking to get into it, just don't expect to like hop in and start ripping clubs apart and playing festivals and stuff. Like you got to pay your dues, put your time in, get yourself to a place where you can do that. Just work, 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 mm -hmm. practice, practice all the time as much as you can practices everything yeah and I know a lot of people out there you know some or some people might think like well I, you know I don't have an opportunity to start at a club or like play at a club or apprentice from a DJ at a club or something like that but it's like you can always reach out to DJs on social media you know we all have Twitter Snapchats Instagrams Facebook SoundClouds I mean good God start throwing parties at home yeah so reach out to seriously though reach out to other DJs out there and then practice at home and practice and practice like he said practice 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 because even if you're not in a club yet or like you know affiliated with any clubs but if you can go in and you know present your mix or mix in front of somebody and show them that you know how to read a crowd and do all that stuff then you're gonna yeah doors will start opening up for you so just practice and know your craft know your music have you're a home big... practicing record it so you can listen to it back and you can hear like oh man i should have done this there or like oh my lows were too whatever my highs were this you know mm -hmm. exactly this song was way louder than this one i mixed right. into like well, yep. got off dog stepping and whatever you know whatever just exactly. practice i think those are good tips listen. solid listen to yourself Exactly. I mean, anything you do, they'll record yourself and you'll get better at it. Like with, you know, skateboarding, I was saying, it helps to just see like where you're not committing or where you're misstepping or whatever. So yeah, just always record yourself if you want to get better. It's weird and it can be awkward, but you get better at it, you know? Where do you see DJ, DJing taking you in the next three to five years? Or like, what do you hope to get out of DJing in the next three to five years? Well, I mean, I would love to get to a point where that's all I do. And I don't have to worry about a day job, but... We, we would all love that. Yeah, I don't know. I just see it taking me to better levels, I guess. Getting better, maybe play some different places, hopefully, in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, you've already played a bunch of, you know, different gigs, I'd say, this last year than you probably did the year before. Sure. Just from meeting people down in Des Moines and networking and talking to people and yeah. just being a cool dude. I mean, that's all it really takes is just know your stuff, just be a chill person, I mean, I network. I don't really see it taking me places but at the same time I just see myself getting better meeting more people and then in turn that taking me places exactly that makes sense to me dope what are your thoughts on you know maybe a little bit of the Des Moines scene or the Cedar Falls scene maybe the Midwest scene in general but just you know thoughts on the the music scene it could be you know the electronic part of it or just Des Moines pretty tight I like it cuz like everybody knows everybody down there for the most part and it's just like always a fun time there's always somebody playing somewhere in Cedar Falls it's like I'm playing yeah it's a, like weekends it. <laughs> night times only like I don't have just other DJs that I just be like walk out the street and be like oh how was your set tonight because there's not any really yeah I feel that and down in Des Moines it's like you hit Court Avenue and you're like yo hey what's up like yeah, seriously, the Court Ave, the downtown, it's like all one big family down there, and it's it's so rad. That's one of the reasons I wanted to move down there is because I knew that I would be able to do stuff like this, a show with Donuts and DJs, because there's so many different DJs down there and so many just different creative people. And on top of that, they all want to support each other and help each other out. Whereas down here, you have to like, yeah, it's twist an arm and a leg, and there's just not a whole lot of it as far as that goes. So him and I used to run the club together and I was managing, he was assistant managing, but I mean, ever since we've been friends, basically, we've been helping out with shows that were going on, even when Voodoo up here was Jokers. So I guess what was your, you know, some of your favorite or fondest memories of the people we've met? Cause it's been like Mick Foley, Steve-O, Preston, we've done midget wrestling. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, Steve-O was cool, but we didn't really like- Yeah, we didn't get too much just, time like, to chop it up with yeah. him. But uh, I would say, Thomas Ian Nicholas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rookie of the year. Yeah, because we, we filmed the scene for him for an indie movie. And this, that was cool, and he was, like, super cool to talk to, and mm -hmm. he actually, like, hung out with us. And then his band um, played at Derringer's. I opened up for him acoustically. Yeah, but yeah. Cool. I forgot about that. Yeah. It was just, like, a whole chill, chill with Thomas Ian Nicholas day, and he was really cool. And, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Then, oh, meeting uh, Sid from Slipknot. Oh, yeah, uh, tell them that story. Well, he was like headlining the Joker's stage, and I was just like hanging out. Is that five one five live? Pro footage, and I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna go out 
and go around like the crowd and just like get some footage from the back and everything. And as I'm like, just get off the stage, I'm like walking down the street, I got my camera up going. This guy in like a purple dope ass suit with baseball gloves and like a mohawk and shit. Red and just mohawk, like yeah. stops me, he's like, yo man, can you care if I cut a promo? And it was like <laughs> loud and I was just like, yeah, do whatever you wanna do. So yeah, he's like, yo, what's up? This is Legendary Sid from Slipknot, woo woo. And I was like, <laughs> Didn't hear it at the time, and I was just like, he's like done, and I was like, all right, man, cool. Just like dapped Thanks. it up, walked away. I didn't even like think about it. Went, got my footage, and then after we dumped it all on the computer. Yeah, it was like a couple days later. He's like at his house, just calls me. He's like, yo, you know you met Sid from Slipknot? And I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, you know, I was like, did some guy, you know, give you a promo or an interview? He's like, yeah, some guy hollered at me. I know you mentioned it or something. I was like, yeah, dude, that was Sid from Slipknot, and I sent him like snaps of it or whatever. And uh, maybe I'll splice that clip in right now. Yo, what up? DJ So it was really dope that he got that promo. And luckily, like I said, we've just been, you know, good friends the last better part of a decade. And in that decade, we've got to see and meet so many cool people and interact with them. I mean, hell, we even got a promo with Heath Slater while he was tag <laughs> yes. team champions. What's up, man? DJ T back here with Heath Slater. Woo! Tag team champions Woo! with Rhino. I don't even have my title with That's him, but right. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're in Des Moines, look this man up for sure. Good times, good fun, good person. You got to love that, right? <laughs> um, oh, man. Waka Flocka. Waka anyway. Flocka, that's right. We were DJing and that he was, was had his after party at the club after 515 and he was the nicest, like most calmest dude to talk to. Like he'd be like, hey, is it okay if I go free pour some shots into let people's mouth? Let me pour you a shot. And I'm like, yeah, dude, that's cool. And it's so weird because he's, you know, always screaming brick squad and turn up and stuff. And, bow, uh, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that night, I don't remember all of it at the end, but that night got crazy and... Yeah, so I'm just glad that we, you know, I, I met him and the universe brought us together. I'm glad we're best friends. I'm glad that he wanted to follow in my footsteps of DJing, so to speak, anyway. And yeah, thanks for doing this Donuts and DJs with me. Now is your time to plug, you know, any upcoming gigs you got or, Ooh, you know, that kind of fun stuff. in Des Moines for tonight and the next weekend. Except for this isn't going to get probably posted until like well. next week. But he it's will be here. It's a Friday. I'm going to be playing. He will be in Des Moines for the next Otherwise, couple weekends. Otherwise, catch me so. in Cedar Falls yep. at Voodoo Lounge most of the time. We boogie. And all of his social media links, as always, will be down in the description. So go check those out, and you can figure out So check us out. where Holland is playing. <laughs> and you can go root him on and buy him shots of Jameson. <laughs> no, please do not. Thanks so much for doing oh. this. Ep what? What do you keep saying? I got to give a shout out to... Seagram's Gin, because I'm drinking it, <laughs> and, and they pay me for it. <laughs> no, to Reverie and Solace, and you, obviously, for... That's kind of like the, the dudes that got me going on this craft. And so, keep pushing you, and... Thanks, dudes. Just wanted to throw that out there so you're not like, Ooh, thanks for not talking about me, you oh, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> and Reverie is going to do you. one, and I believe Pippi's coming up. I got it in my calendar. So, yeah, we're going to get Solace on here, too. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. Let me know in the, down in the comments <laughs> below what else, who else you would like to see me interview, guys. Leave some dream DJ guests. Go bug them on Twitter. Tell them about my series. Who knows? You never know who we might get on this show. But yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of Donuts and DJs, guys. For Holland, I'm t -Beck. You know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. And until next time, guys, we, we out. Yeah, I'm going to take my friend to the old town road. I'm going to... Eat some donuts till they turn to donut holes. Ah.